Okay. All right. I'm ready. Gotcha. Are we on? We're on. So the first thing I would like to start with is how many times a day do I masturbate? I need a drink before I talk about that. <laughs> How many times did you really want an answer for this thing? This is going to be part of the interview? I need to get my calculator from my office. I can only answer for myself because I've never masturbated anybody else in a band. <laughs> I just imagine what the... On the days that I masturbate, it's three times. Minimum. Ugh. On average, 0.5? I mean, metal masturbation or... Zero jerking off. At least my pee pee didn't jerk off. My mind jerked off a lot. I mean, all total? Once or twice. Usually twice. This is not being filmed. <laughs> the recording of Winter Solstice was definitely, at a personal level, the most difficult for me. Just a, a huge mess to record. Winter Solstice was pretty much in the can, done, before we played live. Live interpretation of the songs didn't exist yet. So everything was basically patchwork put together in the studio. We never had really a chance to, to kind of feel it out as a band. I, mean, I love the way Winter Solstice ultimately came out, but it was, it, was, it was hard getting there. But we really sat down this time around and collaborated right from the start. Recording with Sonos was always such a nightmare that I didn't... It was it was strange to want to do it again. It, was, it seemed like gluttony for punishment. When we were getting ready to do it, it looked like it was just going to be Andy and me. And, and fortunately, Andy is a phenomenal drummer. I played drums when I was in junior high and high school. And then I basically had to set the sticks down when I went to college and never... I never really picked up sticks all that much until I started uh, Sonus. But I honestly didn't want to sit there and record the majority of the instruments again. And even though in the past, if you look at the records, a lot of the music is written by me, that was never because I wanted to be the guy writing it. That was just because the other people didn't bring material. Ah, fuck! At some point, I became good friends with Tim. because we started playing guitar together and we formed this other band called Mike Could. We gave Luis a copy of this like little demo Mike Could record. The next thing I know, he was like knocking on our door saying, I, I want to be in this band, A, and B, I want you to be in Sonus. Really what it was is Luis bullied himself into my first band and then he bullied us into his other band. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm in this band now. While I know the band has been around 25 years, I certainly haven't participated anywhere near that. But I'm one of the lucky ones that gets to participate right now. As far as I know, Sonus has been around since time immemorial. If you go to the right you know, caves out in the jungle somewhere, you'll see paintings featuring skeletons and bouncy eyeballs. One you know, slightly larger humanoid amongst all of the figures, you're telling everybody what to do. I had first heard of Sona Sombra, probably in the 90s. I subscribed to this magazine called Expose, and there was reviews of different albums in the back, and hundreds and hundreds of reviews of albums that had come out and recently, and I was just overwhelmed by, wow, there's a, a ton of great progressive rock out there. We, Where's this all coming from? And this one album cover caught my eye. It was a bunch of eyeballs dropping into a body of water. And I'm like, what in the world is this? Song of Sombra, Snapshots from Limbo. And it had like this great review. And I'm like, well, someday I might have to buy this album. Flash forward to now, I'm in this band with these guys. I had no idea back then that all of this was going to come together and that they were all going to end up moving to Chicago and that I was going to be a part of this whole thing. Paralyzed with fever. Roy, I thought for the first moment I heard him, this is a perfect voice for Sonus, but he always seemed to be very busy 
And um, I, I just thought, I, this man, you know, he's got little children. He's really kind-hearted. I can't really pull him into this. You know, that's just not for him. But desperation erodes morality. So after a while, I thought, fuck it, I need him. This is a chance for me to, to not just perform, but also create. And that, that's a big deal. And I, I haven't, I've been doing a lot of tribute bands prior to this, so very different to be in a band where creating new music as opposed to playing somebody else's music. And the last piece of the puzzle was Britney. Pressure is fading. I shout but you don't seem to hear. Trying to breathe. Your eyes are distant, stay with tears. I stand helpless as the walls fall. Who I met when I started working at Columbia College. I was in Castor and Pollux, and uh, we had shows, and at one of the shows, Luis showed up. Britney brought this pop sensibility and this incredible voice to it. He loved it. And I asked her if she'd be interested in doing this dinosaur band recording, and she said yes, and she just came and nailed it. And I ended up singing at the album release show, then I ended up singing at more shows, and there was this unspoken entry into the band. I just, without being asked, without <laughs> a sit down over coffee or a contract, <laughs> which I wouldn't expect. I didn't declare her a member of the band because I, I, I didn't want her to sort of like, you know, have to embarrass me, tell me, you know, I really don't want to be a part of this shit. The more I performed with Sodas Umbra, the more that they let me stretch out. Just whatever it was that I could come up with, go for it. And if they liked it, they would, we would keep it. If not, they would let me know. So it was basically just like improvise your way into this band. So we created her on the album. And then as we began to promote with her solstice, it became clear that she was adding so much more. And I started to become more of like an arranger in that sense, like for vocal parts and stuff. I was working with Rowie more, and they were the band was just letting me find out a way to fit in. And it was just obvious that she was a part of the band, you know, whether it was made official or not was kind of besides the point. I can try and debate it all in my head as much as I want to, and I usually do, but whenever I'm called to show up, I show up. <laughs> That's just my position right now. Brittany, show up. I'm there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And that's how Sonos was reborn as basically with only me and Andy as previous members and me the only original standing guy and Chicago musicians. You know? It should start from virtually just two guitars to just insanity by the end, you know. Like that's, right. that's what I'm thinking. The rehearsal room was a place where everybody brought their ideas. <laughs> And they were judged on their merit. They were not judged on who brought them or who's got seniority. None of that bullshit. It was, was it a good idea or is it a stupid idea? Is it a mediocre idea? Is it something we're going to have to use because we just can't come up with something better? You know, let's just be honest about it and, and come up with good shit. Certainly, you know, we explored some things that, you know, we threw away. But most importantly, we explored a lot of things that are arriving with this new record. And uh, so that collaborative creation uh, was not a part of Winter Solstice. I wanted a collaboration in the real sense of the word. I, didn't, I wasn't interested in, in getting people near me that would say, all my ideas are great. Because that's bullshit. I wanted people who would tell me, that idea sucks. We had weekly rehearsals where we came together with new ideas and we worked on those new ideas. And as a direct result, uh, we came up with the songs. It was a, a learning curve to make everybody comfortable enough where, where you could shoot down an idea and they would understand you were not shooting them down. When, when Winter Solstice was being done, there's a collection of, of musicians who respect each other, like each other, you know, obviously work well together, but it's not a bit. This latest record has just been... We recorded it so quick. These guys are just all about, you know, okay, so this is where the flute solo goes. That's like music my ears, you know, I mean, or this is the flute part, we've got to get this flute part. Right. 
And it's just like, okay, that's working. What we do in this band is what I envisioned myself doing when I wanted to make music. And I've been in a lot of bands. So I want to continue to do this as long as possible. And I hope that we can. Everybody has their day jobs in this band, but everybody like lives to do this. I know that Louise does for sure. Is this where I announced I'm quitting the band? Recording with Sonos was always such a nightmare. I honestly didn't want to sit there and record the majority of the instruments again. The other people didn't bring material. I want the people who would tell me that idea sucks. But now everybody's participating. So now I'm the bass player. And I'm the guy that writes some of the music and I have some of the crazy ideas. But I'm not the only one. And, and this is really great for me uh, because it, it, it allows me to enjoy it. Whereas in the past, I, um, I didn't necessarily enjoy it all the time. I carried this shit for a quarter century. 20 of those years was mostly just me. And if all that is not gonna go to waste and if we can now make something great out of all that, so much the better. You know, so why stop? But the difference is, my role in that is no longer going to be Santa Claus's evil Mexican Arabiner fucking cousin carrying the weight. You know, it's going to be, I'm part of a band of very creative people. And that is also a brave new world in the history of Sonus. When I am the, the most irreverent, the fattest, and the most useless member, life is good.